right, welcome back everyone. Today I have Kristen Mayer with me, who's the owner of Betty Designs and one of my favorite people. So I've actually been on her triathlon team. I don't even know how many years I've been on Kristen because then I was on and then I was off and then I was on and then I saw. <laughs> I'm going to say six. I'm going to say I, six is a fair number. I think that's Maybe. a fair number. I was trying to guess. I was trying to go through the years as well. And I can't remember which year was on off, but I'm thrilled that you've been back. So makes me happy. Oh, so excited. And I'm so excited to have everyone get to know you because I have a lot of endurance athletes. I'm sure most of them are already familiar with you. A lot of them are on the team or have been on the team, but I know there's a lot of people out there that I'm like, Anytime you ask where my outfit's from, it's from <laughs> Betty Design, if I'm in a cycling kit. So this is exciting. Can you give us just a quick rundown, just a little intro to you, and then we'll get started? A little intro about me. Oh, my gosh. Well, I have been a designer my entire career. Um, I had a love of art from the little girl stage, and I've been fortunate enough to work for a, a number of really great companies. I freelanced for years before starting Betty Designs. Um, and during my free, freelance years, I became an endurance athlete. And this was kind of post-college era when I started in endurance sports. So they've kind of gone hand in hand. Um, I dabbled with working for myself in and out of companies. And then finally, in 2010, I started my own official gig. So exciting. And we're all so glad that you did. I remember when I found you online. I still remember. It was, uh, when did you start the first team? Was it in 2010? or? What year? No, was it? Uh, so founded in 2010, and then I, you know, I should know this. You would think, but I feel like it was 2014 was the first team, because okay. we're year 10 right now, or we're 11. I mean, my gosh, I should know this, right? Um, but anyway, <laughs> that was the. It was a couple of years afterwards until I settled in. Yes, yeah, because I joined in 2015, but I was so excited when I found you because I was like. I actually had wanted to do my own line, but I'm, it's so not my area of expertise. I mean, I it, not, I could have never done it. And when I found you, I was like, well, now there's no need to do it. But I mean, the cycling <laughs> and triathlon world was hurting for decent, like kit yeah. wear. Yeah, it was, which is, um, which is, you know, why entrepreneurs start something, right? You're like, oh, I want this thing, but I can't find it. I mean, that was part of it, um, but it has come a long way. I mean, it really started to blossom probably 2012. And now there's just a ton of cycling and triathlon companies. So it's really exciting to see that. Yes, absolutely. Well, can you tell us, I, like I mentioned right before we started recording, I love your story, your backstory. And that's kind of where I want to start because I think it's so fascinating for women in their 40s, like myself, who just started a business two and a half years ago, it is overwhelming. And I can't tell you how many times I was like, I have no business doing this. I'm too old to do this. I mean, all of those imposter syndrome before you even get started. So can you share your backstory of how you even got into like what became of Betty Designs eventually? So it was an interesting time in my career. I had been freelancing from home for probably... I would say eight years full time and, and working in endurance sports. And I was doing kit design for some, some various clients when custom gear was sort of a becoming a thing that was accessible. Um, and then of course, shit hits, oops, I said a bad word, hits the fan in oh, life. God. And, you know, my husband of almost 15 years says he's not in love with me and he's done. So I was pretty shell shocked. Um, and at the and time, like I said, I was free. I was 42 when that happened. Um, and I actually never had thought that much about that being a potential thing. But in hindsight, it's really, it's changed me in so many ways for the better. And Betty Designs would not be here today, I believe, if that did not happen in my life. So it kind of, you know, I we had a five-year-old son at the time and I was freelancing. I was doing okay, but it was like a dual household income. And when this happened, I went, I can't really afford everything on my own. What am I going to do here? And I had the, you know, during the time of major where I was just curled up in a ball, I was doing triathlon. Triathlon saved me. Having my son saved me because it 
I mean, gave me purpose every day to get out of bed and kind of forge forward. But I had a couple of really good people that entered my life and kind of noticed that I had this design, you know, talent, if you will. And they were like, you know, the one, the one that really pushed me, I am now married to, I can happily say we got married in 2016, but he, we got set up and he, at first we didn't really date. We're just buddies and he's very inquisitive and he's very smart. And he's like, you know, you seem like you're pretty talented. I don't understand why you just don't start your own brand. And I just started crying. And I was like, so overwhelmed at that moment in my life. I also said the silliest thing. I said, you know, first of all, I don't have enough money to start a business right now. I don't know how to run a business and I can't compete with Nike. I mean, cycling and triathlon, that's not what you think of when you think of Nike, but that's what I thought you had to be. You had to be this ginormous brand, right? Yeah. And so everything was very overwhelming to me. I couldn't see like two feet in front of me. And he really, you know, he said to me, you're already freelancing, which means you are running your own way. But he just broke it down for me. He's like, you know, obviously you've designed cycling kit. Is there someone you could call that could help you do, you know, manufacture your own design? And I went, yes. So he walked me through some baby steps and it became less um, overwhelming. And it kind of said, you know, okay, I'm going to take this first checkbox and say, I'm going to do this first thing first. I'm going to make the call to the factory, set up a meeting and ask, will you make me 50 cycling jerseys? And they were someone I had worked with um, from an art perspective. So they said yes. And this was this was probably summer of 2010. So I don't know, July, August. Um, so they said yes. And I said, okay, well, I can't guarantee that I'm going to come back. But if I sell all the jerseys, I'm going to be back. And I said, but there's one thing. Because I'm like a total stickler for design details. I said, I want my own zipper pulls. And they're looking at me and they're like, but we have to make 5,000 zipper pulls. And I said, well, how much is that going to be? Because it's really important. The details are really important. So I was about the zipper pulls and 50 jerseys. And I literally started there. Um, Kona was on the horizon. I had gone to Kona. I had raced in 1998. I had been back every year, except for the year I was pregnant. And I used to work at the event in some capacity. I'd worked for different brands. I worked for multisports.com, Zoot. So I kind of said, okay, how am I going to get to the island? And I didn't tell anyone I was starting Betty Designs in my own line. I just said, I'm going to go to Kona and I'm going to walk around town in my cycling jersey, which sounds pretty funny and odd, but everyone walks around. If you've been to Kona during Ironman, men walk around in Speedos. It's just full <laughs> endurance athlete. I mean, it's I it. no one cares, right? So I was like, okay, I'm just going to walk around town in my cycling jersey and I'm not going to tell anyone. And I knew I'd know a bunch of people there. I'm going to see if anyone notices the jersey and they comment on it. Because, you know, as women, we go, oh, my God, you look so cute. Where did you get that? So, so yeah. So I thought, you know, I'm going to just see if anyone relax and it reacts to this thing. And if they don't, it's probably not a great sign. Um, in the first half hour off the plane, a shop owner walked out of her shop and grabbed me and said, what are you wearing and where did you get it? And I said, oh, and I was... And I literally was like, are you like, you're talking to me? What? And she's like, yeah, you're, you're cycling Jersey. Where'd you get that? And I was like, very talking in a very soft voice. I'm like, well, I designed it. And she's like, come in my shop right now. Do you have any more of those in your backpack? And I said, well, actually I do. And I was like, still not sure this was really happening. And she pulls me in and she said, well, let's see him. She goes, okay, well, I'm going to buy 15 of them right now. And she bought no. them on the spot to hang in her shop. So I kind of was like, oh my gosh, maybe I'm on to something. And as the week went on and I did my thing and, you know, I swim and I hung out and, you know, saw a lot of industry people, people started hearing that I had these jerseys for sale. And by the time I left the island, you know, less than a week later, they were sold out. They were gone. So I was really excited about that. Um, and it gave me yeah. a lot of hope. Hope for life, for hope for business, everything. Yes. And I feel like that proves to you that it was your time to shine. Like karma coming around and just being like, this is the right thing for you. Because who, I don't know a single person who walks out of their shop and just grabs somebody off the street. I mean, that's like, right. doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. <laughs> it was, it was your time. 
For well, sure. thank you. I, I mean, haven't you guys, I've, ch I've chased women out of coffee shops to ask them about their leggings. Haven't you? I mean, oh, honestly, I really true. have. So it's kind of like, like that. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you get back, you had sold all your jerseys. Did you go back to the manufacturer and be like, all right, well, guess I'm starting yeah. with another one. Did you stick with the yeah. same design or, or how many designs did you do from that point? No, it was the same design. Um, and what I did was I ordered more jerseys and then I ordered the same number of cycling shorts and they weren't bib shorts at the time because I only wore cycling shorts and there weren't a lot of women wearing bibs. So I kind of went back and I ordered a set of 50 jerseys, 50 bibs. Um, and then I decided I should probably have a website. So the website went up, I think, right around that time as well. So, and it was line art. There were no, no photos. It was just line art. And then my portfolio of other graphic design stuff I had done. So it was like a WordPress website and okay, well, let's see what happens. Cause if I sell one a day, I'll make X dollars and that can go into the pot of savings. Mm -hmm. And that was the yeah. thought process. And so how did that go? It went better than I expected. And I was, <laughs> I was still freelancing. I was selling enough that I just kept putting the money back in the business. And I think it was around um, early 2012, I realized that Betty Designs was taking on a life of its own and required my full-time attention. So I stopped mm -hmm. freelancing um, and I went at first and I redesigned the website. I got on an e-commerce platform and a, you know, a small collection, but that's really when it started. And I would say it became real and it became my full-time job and focus. Oh, so originally you only had the one design and then you created another design, just one and yep. put that on WordPress. And for people that aren't familiar with triathlons and Kona. So it's bike shorts, it's the top. So when you guys talk about the kit, <laughs> no, yeah. I just yeah, the people kit. that don't know. Good idea. <laughs> I just didn't, what was it that you were creating so people that aren't familiar can have that visual of what you created for these athletes? So I started with the cycling kit, as we call it, which is the jersey, like you said, and the shorts. And the reason I started with that is every triathlete rides a bicycle and you train mostly riding your bicycle. That's like the most time consuming thing. So that's what I started with. But soon after, you know, I did introduce a couple of other um, cycling kits. I did two other designs and then it was time to do a triathlon kit. So I did a tri top and a tri short and they were separates that's what i started with and that went really well but it was very methodical and it was very slow because i didn't want to take any loans out i had to be careful that i was only spending what i what i could spend um mm -hmm. and i sort of was in this mindset coming out of the divorce that i just didn't want to owe anybody anything it was just i'm going to do this for myself i'm going to do it my way i was i was a bit stubborn to be honest um but it worked out really well. And I think it was a smart way to go. And if I did it again, I think I'd still do it pretty methodically. Yes. So what would you say in the first, like one to three years? Cause I'm still, I'm two and a half years in. And like I said, again, right before we started recording this entrepreneurship in your forties is no joke. So you were 42 when you started Betty Designs. Mm -hmm. So what you know, would you I say like, this hurdles the first few years? It's funny. I don't feel like I thought of it as entrepreneurship because I never thought to myself, I want to start my own business. Even though I was a freelance designer and that was running my own business, working from home, it never was a mindset, oh, I'm going to start this business. It was scary to put the brand out there for sure. And then I went, wow, this is turning into a real company in 2012. But it was really more, I got caught, you know, for me coming from the design background, I was so caught in the weeds of creating really neat things. So right away I created a note card. So if you ordered from me, you had a note card that I would hand write a thank you note on and yes. I ordered packaging. So there were certain tasks and design and marketing elements that were really focusing my attention. So I wasn't thinking about it from being a business owner or having major imposter syndrome, because I'm not sure I really even believed I was, you know, really doing anything like a big company anyway. It was just out of my, you know, my garage. 
<laughs> so cool. I love that. I still remember the first kit that I bought from you with the handwritten card. And that was massive because I was like, I just got a handwritten card from this. You think that those small details just people don't pay attention to, but they absolutely do. I'm sure that was a lot of your early success with uh, with repeat customers, you know, along with a great fitting kit and something beautiful. So tell us about the logo, because every time I wear anything, people are like, oh, that's really cool. It's like a butterfly in a skull. Like, how did you come up with that? So when I raced triathlon, I, um, I always felt like, and it's, this actually started in my childhood, my dad, like I played boys baseball and stuff. And I was very much a tomboy. And my dad was always trying to toughen me up and toughen me up. And when I got into doing triathlon, living in coastal California, we'd have some surf entry races. And I was a competent swimmer, but there was something about an irrational fear of me diving headfirst into oncoming surf, and I would panic. So, yes. But I did it. I did it repetitively, and I put myself in that situation. But I, I always loved like a skull for some reason. I thought it, I thought it was a symbol of being tough. You know, some people go, Oh, it's death or whatever. I think of it's being tough and I had a skull necklace. So I would wear this skull necklace when competing because I thought it would make me tough and be able to push through things. That was what I did. And so when I started to think about the logo that, that played into it. And then the other thing was what I always admired throughout, you know, just as long as I can remember is women who were in sports who were still feminine, who still could put take off their uniform, their kit, and dress up. I, I just always liked that. And I know it's hard to say that these days. There's so many things that people don't like to say about women. I think it's okay. You know, I'm a little older, right? So I think it's okay to be feminine. I think it's okay to put on a dress. I think it's okay to say you're a girl and you want to look pretty or beautiful. I don't find any fault in that. So for me, the butterfly came into play because it was two facets of a female athlete. It was the strength and the beauty. And it didn't mean that you were model beautiful. It just meant that you were beautiful and being yourself and you had two facets to your life was really where it mm -hmm. came from. I love that so much. And let's talk about the the logo. I mean, how did you come up with the logo? Because I I love the first part that uh, on your website, when it's talking about you and the logo and the brand, I love the we thrive on sweat and live for fashion, but then it goes on to your exact logo or not logo, but the uh, phrase, which is badass is beautiful. Like, how did you come up with that? Because I love it. Well, thank you. That, you know, it's funny. I didn't sit down. I knew that, you know, to have, I knew I understood marketing. So I knew that I needed to have a tagline at some point. But again, I sort of fell into creating this brand. So I didn't do it. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't sit there and script how I was going to do this thing. I just sort of went and did things. And yeah. I I don't know really how it happened. I didn't sit down and run, write a bunch of taglines. But I think I was talking about the logo to several people because they would ask. And I was like, well, you know, it's like you're badass and you're beautiful. And then I was like, oh, badass is beautiful. So that was really, it just evolved very naturally. It wasn't yeah, something so. that I sat there for hours and agonized over. Well, my husband would be proud because he's in advertising. <laughs> yes. Steve would <laughs> just, be very proud. He just came right to you, which is amazing. So, okay. So here you have it. You start the, you start in 2010, it starts to pick up in 2012. What advice would you have? to a female out there. So obviously our audience is women over the age of 35, most over 40 that are thinking about starting a business, but all of these impending thoughts of I'm too old. I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I keep telling people, I don't know what I'm doing. I keep launching myself <laughs> off the cliff and it's like sink or right. swim every time. Right. Like you just have right. to figure it out. But what advice yeah. would you give to someone that's sitting there that's like, I don't know if I can do this. Well, number one, I don't, I never thought about age. I don't, I never thought I was old at 40. Um, I try not to think about it now, but yeah. at 40, I felt like that was for me. I remember turning 40. And I think that was like a year where I went, wow, this is really cool. I feel like an adult. I feel 
a little bit more comfortable in my skin than I used to, thankfully. But I never felt old. So I think that never played into it. And I think that starting a business later in life, you bring a lot of experience. Uh, whether you've raised children or not, whether you've worked for other companies or not, you have wisdom in existence and living life. And I think, you know, in going with a lot of your intuition and also just don't, you know, I tried to think about the finish line and competing with Nike, which is ridiculous. And I know that now there's no reason to think about those things. And I think don't. And also, I never thought about what anyone was going to think I was going to build this thing. And if it worked, that would be great. And what a what a bonus that would be. But if it didn't, that was okay. So I was also not afraid to fail. I used swear words early in marketing, which back then, your husband could probably agree with me, to say to <laughs> decide to hang your hat on using the word badass, it was a pretty risky thing to do. Now it's like as common as Kleenex. But I think I think you just have to say, okay, why am I doing this? What are the reasons? Uh, and if it's intrinsic, and meaningful and purposeful, then I think it's I think it's totally possible. And that's what I would just tell myself, really. And you have nothing to lose. No one's judging you. And most people aren't even gonna know you're doing it. Okay. Such a good point, right? I that's love good that. advice. Really good advice. And the thing that when you said I wasn't afraid to fail, mm -hmm. like that is mm -hmm. the biggest thing right there because yeah. this is like I mean, I always like to relate when I have somebody in the weights room and they're like, oh, I just don't really know what I'm doing. I'm like, I promise you, you think that everyone's paying attention. Nobody gives a crap. Right. No. <laughs> yeah. No one cares right. about you. They're thinking about themselves. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's well, a lot of it, your, your success. Well, thank you. I think part of it was um, I played a lot of sports my whole life and getting into endurance sports late in life was humbling. I had to learn from yeah. the ground up and it's very challenging. You're pushing yourself all the time. So that, I mean, there was a lot of failures there. I mean, failure after failure fa after failure, but you kind of just realize how strong you are overcoming every little thing that's put in front of you. And, and so I just sort of felt like pushing through those little barriers in sport really translate over to a mindset for business. Um, and I've always mm -hmm. felt that way. Yeah. I loved what you said too right in the beginning where your now husband was saying, well, you just, he made it feel easy. I don't want to say easy, but just if you accessible. take this, yeah, accessible and you take this step and then you take this step. And I love that you just thought, okay, I'm going to do this step, then see how I feel. Yep. And yep. that in it, in addition to the, if I fail, that's okay. It takes all the pressure off and just probably makes it feel like, okay, I can do this because I'm going to finish this task and then I'll see what the next step to move forward is, Yeah, which I think is so nice to, oh, for sure. It takes the pressure off of it. Like you said, you were thinking about the finish line. Like that's the, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to feel so overwhelmed. You'd never start. Right. Right. Well, I think that's it. And I think in the moment where my life was, I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a lot of choice. I needed to try something or I was going to go work out of my home, which I really did not want to do being a mom. I did not want to leave the household during that time um, for my son. So that was a big motivator for me to try something, even if it failed, because I knew I could always go back to corporate and go inside somewhere if I had to. Yeah. You mentioned at the first, and I don't know if we were recording or not, but you mentioned how your business has transitioned from where you started mm -hmm. into, into what, what it is today. So can we talk about that? I, I, and I do have to say that you have pushed the boundaries on like the fashion for sure. Like you're, you're very bold in your designs, which so, I mean, so many, that's why you have such a great audience because we all love that, but you're not afraid to put it out there and be really bold, very different from any other cycling company. That's the traditional staying. It's like staying safe with their designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I always felt like for me, I wanted whatever I designed to evoke a, a reaction. And so if I were to show you both of you something, you both have different tastes and you come from different backgrounds. So one of you may like one of the things that the other doesn't like, you may both like the same thing. But when I showed a design, I wanted someone to say they loved it or hate it. I didn't want to be in the middle like, oh, 
I don't know. It's okay. Because I don't think that that was going to be successful. I don't want to be vanilla and in the middle. So I want to sort of provoke a reaction in some ways. My first swimsuit, I had a bikini with a butterfly on the crotch. And you know what? It's that. not traditional. I, I mean, and mm -hmm. in the most recent collection I just launched in January, someone pointed out on Instagram because I put up a picture of the model in her one piece swimsuit and there was a big polka dot right where it counts. And someone said, well, that, you know, someone made some snarky <laughs> comment and I just didn't respond because you know what? I did it on purpose. I think it's fun. I think we have to have fun. You know, everyone, everything is so serious and let's not take ourselves so seriously because let's be honest, endurance athletes are serious. We're intense. Um, serious. But let's have some fun, fun with fashion and color. And I don't know. And I think maybe that's what a lot of these women have gravitated towards that Absolutely. sort of got them out of being safe. So. Yes. I love that. And how powerful that you wanted. I feel like not everyone is that brave no. that they want to create a design that people either love or hate. I feel like that's not where a lot of people create from, which is probably why you're so successful is because you are brave and have that foresight of designing with power behind it and creativity like that for sure. Well, possibly. Thank you. I also, I haven't, I didn't have, you know, I didn't take on investment dollars. So I didn't have someone over my head telling me you only have to make things that are going to sell, sell, sell as fast as possible because you need to give me my money back. So I was doing it a lot on my own terms. Um, design has just fueled everything for me. You know, the business stuff is sort of secondary and I learned it. Um, but design just fuels my passion and it fuels my passion for sports. So I wanted to have fun with it. It was my new canvas. And yeah. I wanted women to feel, I wanted them to feel beautiful when they put it on. I mean, that's why we all go shopping, right? You are buying a dress for an occasion. You want to feel beautiful when you put it on. And I was hoping that would happen um, for women yeah. when they put on my kit. Oh, it does for sure. I pulled up this. I was just trying to find, I took a screenshot of it uh, off of your website and everything that you've been saying, I'm like, this is a hundred percent Kristen. And I love it. Whether you vibe with Kristen or not, she is unapologetically herself and will never look back down on her beliefs, skip out on a challenge or make excuse, excuses. That right there, I, I think that. really setting like that, you know, intention out there and just putting it out and being like, you may not vibe with me, but those are the, the people that get ahead. I feel like then if you're, if you're all the same, it's really hard. And coming from marketing, I mean, I'm not in marketing, but listening to my husband and chirping in my ear all the time, he's like, you have to draw a line in the sand or you're just like everyone else. You can't so appeal correct. to everyone. So you appeal cannot. to your niche, be the very best. And I feel like a hundred percent, you are the very best in this niche of triathlon. So talk about everything that you offer as far as your line. So we know you have triathlon and cycling wear, but I love what you just launched um, last year. Can you talk about everything that you offer with your brand? Sure. sure. I mean, we've um, obviously the cycling triathlon swimming is a key component and, and triathletes run. And I haven't gone full into the running gear. A lot of the running silhouettes, like the cute little shorts everyone wears. Those are actually quite hard to make something that fits a lot of uh, bodies. And yeah. the funny thing is I also don't run in them a lot. I love a good legging or a capri or I like a tight fitting short. So, you know, part of it is um, not putting my hands in too many buckets where there's a lot of competition. And part of it is yeah. I'm creating first and foremost, the things that I'm living in and I'm training in and I'm wearing. And, um, cause my website can't have 500,000 things on it. You know, and we've done hats and yes, we did play with dog collars in the past year and race belts and things like that. Uh, but after 13 years of doing what I call colorful Lycra and big, bright, bold, I've always loved fashion and I've noticed as I've gotten older, I really like to dress a lot more simply in general, meaning I like really good fitting things 
black to me is boss. You can put it on, you can immediately look more dressed up. Um, when I travel, I was, I found myself always wearing black because I'm not going to get it dirty. You know, I'm not a coffee drinker, but if I, I do drink red wine. So if I spill the red wine, eh, you might not see it. But anyway, I was like, you know, why not try and get into doing some basic fashion pieces? I know it's an oversaturated market, but for my customer base, um, you know, if they really love the brand, maybe they'll want to buy something that's a simple wardrobe staple. Um, that they can wear day in and day out and dress up or down. And that was sort of the the premise behind it. And it's the new BD Lab Sportswear line. I'm thrilled with it. I am wearing the pieces all the time. Um, it's just starting to get some traction. Um, and that's what I, I wanted it. to bring to the table. Yeah. And is that how, to go back to the question Haley just asked um, prior, is that how it's changed? What that's how it's changed. Needed? Yeah, it's definitely changed in that regard from a product perspective. From a huge business perspective, I will say, I'm going to digress a little bit when she talks about the ambassador team. The, the group of the community has grown immensely. And again, that was something I didn't sit down and script and say, okay, my goal is I want to create this women's endurance community. I had come from being on the other side and being an athlete and being sponsored and being in these smaller communities in triathlon. And so when I decided I wanted to get the word out, I kind of called some of these people that I knew in triathlon and said, hey, would you wear my stuff? And the small community was formed. I never really realized over time and as we went into the COVID years, um, how much and how important this community has really meant to so many women. I didn't even realize I needed the community. It sort of just slowly evolved on its own. and. It was, like I said, it wasn't something I scripted, but that's how the business has really changed too. And we went from really the ambassador team being elite amateur athletes who were striving for the podium 24 seven to, you know, no, this is more of a community of women who are inviting others in to take up endurance sports or to go in the weight room, push their boundaries, whatever it is, you've got a support group of women of all shapes, sizes, ages, ethnicities from around the globe who all have the same goal. And that is to just be better and they can lean on each other. So that's been a gigantic change. I would say, I mean, I still, some of my greatest friends came from that first year team, which was so, so fun. And I mean, when I jump on there, I, being a business owner and super busy, I'm not on as much as I can, should be or would like to be, but I just am like amazed every time I join and like a new group is there, how supportive the women are that are just yeah. like coming, like supporting everyone. And just, it doesn't matter what level you are and really just loving the brand. I mean, you have created something that is very special and hard to do for a lot of people because there's other companies out there in the trial hunt triathlon world that, you know, have tried it. And it's just like, there's no, there's nothing special to it. And so you see these other, you know, teams out there and, and to each his own, but you have really created like a niche of women that are all super respectful, you know, for the most part and really just yep. loving and wanting to have friendship. I mean, we're, when we get older, it's hard for us in a lot mm -hmm. of places to mm -hmm. have friends. And, you know, once your kids are grown, it's like, well, how do I meet people? You know? And so yep. triathlon, <laughs> cycling, all of that. I'm super curious too, what, how you schedule your week, because obviously, you know, this is full time for you, but you are still crushing <laughs> at all of these events and you go to these events and you're like podium or, you know, PRing and all of this, like, how do you squeeze it all in? Because that's a big part of it too, is not losing yourself in the process and being like, work, 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 work. You clearly still make time for what's, what you're passionate about and what's important to you outside of business. Oh yeah. I want to know this answer too. <laughs> So I've always been a little bit of a freak in terms of a master juggler of all the things. And I learned early on in my career that I wanted to, like, I just, I didn't take up running till my mid twenties. 
If I was going to figure out how to stay in some level of fitness, I had to make that time for myself. I became a very early morning person. Um, work was always very important to me. Um, going to work. I had some really amazing jobs early in my career, but that fitness component always made me feel better starting the day. So that started pretty early. Um, I caught the triathlon bug in 94 and then, you know, it was goal setting, goal setting, but I'm a very goal setting kind of person. And I think for me, if I didn't have the, and I also have a lot of energy, if I don't have that outlet and that space for me, I am not working. I am not doing my best work. Um, yeah. And so that's really, it's very important to me. Uh, it's also time that I solve actually a lot of creative problems. I really love it. In terms of, you know, doing events and doing and hitting the podium, I'm sort of outgrowing that because to be honest, at 56, it's not the same as being 35 to 40. It's, I can't do 12 endurance events a year, you know, and also just mentally, I don't have quite that kind of drive. I'm still very driven, but it's not results oriented in that sense. It's participatory. It's pushing my body in new sports, taking up schemo in the last couple of years and doing a couple of huge bucket list races in this new sport has been it just feels great. And I love that. I love the goal setting and doing something new and evolving. Um, and it's just, I think if it's important enough to you, you make the time for it. You really do. Yeah. But I've okay, learned so for me, what, it just helps me. Yeah. What does your week look like as far as, you know, cycling, running uh, for this year, 2024, right now, what does your yep. week look like as far as your fitness? So right now I'm in uh, schemo mode. So I've got a big schemo race weekend coming up March 1st through 3rd. So basically Mondays I have a day off. I always have one day off week and typically it's a Monday. Um, mm -hmm. And during the week I will have probably five schemo sessions of varying distances and intensities. Those unfortunately have to happen right before and at sunrise because we're not allowed to be on the hill here. So there's a lot of early morning alarms. It's beautiful to see the sun come up. It's freezing cold and you get used to it. Uh, that's my new gonna... normal. Um, it's really, it's quite something. You get fatigued by the time March rolls around doing, if you're doing it all winter, but I love it. Um, and then I have the whole day to work. And then I've got, you know, a couple of days a week where I put aside for strength training. So that happens in the afternoon. Sometimes there's a little bit of a spin on a bike in the afternoon. So I'm working out definitely six days a week and sometimes twice a day, but I fit it in because I'm, I'm good at just work. focusing on work and then going back and doing something for a small break. Yeah. And you're working out at a gym or at your house? In the garage in my house. So I would love, like, I wish I lived near you. I would hire you in five seconds to put me through right? everything. I mean, I dream about having a personal trainer so much because I'm really so I'm really disciplined, but I know I'm not hitting my potential in the gym because I don't have someone spotting me and really watching my form. I'm cognizant of all of that. Um, I'm also cognizant of knowing that now in my mid fifties, lifting weights is so important. Um, but anyway, so I'm doing it all at home. And it keeps it really simple. It saves a lot of time. And I don't swim anymore. I stopped swimming a few years ago. I miss it immensely, but it's a big time out of the day. I think I'll go back to it at some point, but not right now. I don't miss swimming at all. I stopped <laughs> when I was living in New Jersey it's up until so 2020, but I'm like, I don't have to wash the hair. The hair doesn't get uh, ruined. The hair. It's, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's terrible. Pain. That's it's pain. Pain. Yeah, it's a pain because it takes so long and I'm like, I'm spending all this money because I don't have great hair to start with. I mean, I have to put a lot of money into the hair budget. And everyone thinks I'm like, I'm what I call high, low maintenance. I love yes. all of it. Like I like great hair, but I hate doing it. And so the swimming, I was like, oh, now I have to shower, wash the hair, dry it. I mean, the whole nine yards. Oh, yep. Crazy. Yep. Okay. I have a question for you. What will you never compromise on your business with your business? What will I never compromise on? 
I think really it's, honestly, it's the passion I put into it. I think that if I ever compromise on that or get to a point where I am not doing my absolute best work forward, it's not doing the brand justice. So I have been fortunate that we're in year 14. I still, you know, once in a while I do get creative block for sure, but I still feel like I'm feeling very creative and I want to design, design, design. And I think that that's something I'm just never going to compromise on. I'm not going to put something out that's just half-assed or, you know, I don't sit there and take the time and put my personal spin on it. Yeah. Yeah, From an outsider looking in, it seems to like, you just don't compromise on being bold and just Mm -hmm. always doing a hundred percent, which is speaks volumes with your design. Yes. Well, Kristen, this has been so fantastic. Do you have any other questions? I mean, I just, I don't you want to sit down and go out to dinner with her? Oh, are we, I just love that this came, your business came obviously from your passion of being this, extreme athlete, but also from something super hard, this heartache and yeah. this really difficult time in your life and something really beautiful came from it. And I don't know, that's really inspiring to me. Oh, for sure. Yes. Well, please don't stop doing what you're doing. How can people find you? Yeah. We're going to tag this in the Insta or in the podcast as well, but yeah. how can people find you yeah. and your work? Uh, BettyDesigns.com, um, and that is the website. And then our handle on social media, Twitter, Instagram is at Betty Designs. We are on Pinterest. We have a small presence on TikTok, but I'm not really doing a whole lot there. And that's a whole nother conversation. Yes, <laughs> um, me too. <laughs> um, I don't do a lot of video. We have we have a Vimeo channel also where we've done we've done some brand videos. So. We're pretty much on all the, all the regular things except TikTok. Well, yeah. So everyone check her out. If you are a cyclist, triathlete, or just want some fun fashion, everyday athleisure wear, this is where you want to go. Thank you so much for your time, Kristen. I've loved being a part of your brand and I've loved getting to know you. And I just wish you the best success. I'm so glad that I get to continue to be a part of it. So thank you for coming on the show. We have loved having you. Of course. And it was great chatting with both of you as well. And um, we'll have to do it in person sometime for sure. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh, for sure. We're neighbors. So we definitely have to. All right. Yes. <laughs> Deal. Let's do it sooner rather than later. Thanks, Kristen. Have a great day. All right. You too. Right. Thanks, Haley. Bye bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a five star rating and sharing the body pod with your friends. Until next time.